Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, Jess is still out on maternity leave, and we got Lauren LaRosa filling in. And let's get in some front page news. Good morning, Morgan. Good morning. Good morning, y'all. I'm broadcasting uh, from Chicago. You know, the DNC is going on this week. And uh, let me just rewind and say hello to you guys. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Morning. Good morning. Hey. Hey, hey, so let's back up just a little bit on Friday in case you missed it, Vice President Kamala Harris. She laid out her economic plans um, if she won the election uh, in November. In a speech from Raleigh, North Carolina on Friday, Harris said bringing down the cost of living and ending the housing shortage will be her priorities in her first 100 days. Let's hear more from Harris in North Carolina. I will be laser focused on creating opportunities for the middle class that advance their economic security stability, and dignity. When I am elected president, I will make it a top priority to bring down costs and increase economic security for all Americans. My plan will include new penalties for opportunistic companies that exploit crises and break the rules, and we will support smaller food businesses that are trying to play by the rules and get ahead. I know it might sound a little bit more complicated than it is, but, you know, uh, when, when she says she wants to rebuild the middle class and she wants everybody to have the opportunity to own a small business or the opportunity to own a home or put more money in uh, working class people's pockets, that's things I can get with. You know, mm-hmm. talking about bringing down the price of, uh, you know, food and groceries. Groceries, I can get yeah. with that. And most, most people this? will get with that. Yeah, I was going to say, how about this one, though? She also advocated for boosting the child tax credit and increasing housing construction and a federal, of course, you mentioned the federal ban on groceries. I mean, I know y'all got kids, so that tax credit could be really nice. Mm -hmm. But I think Um, it's a very fair question that, uh, you know, ask, you know, just to say, hey, you are the vice president now. And that administration has been in there for the last three and a half. Why wasn't this done three years ago? Why wasn't that? Hey, I mean, that might have been. That might be one of her ticket items that they claim she's not going to deviate from his stuff. But, you know, mm-hmm. moving on, um, she also announced plans to provide. OK, we talked about that the six thousand dollar credit. Um, so VP Harris and her running mate were also on the campaign trail together over the weekend. They kicked off their bus tour in Pennsylvania. Um, Governor Walls uh, and Harris were greeted by crowds at the airport in Pittsburgh um, before boarding uh, the campaign bus for Rochester. Um, sorry about that, guys. Both uh, Harris and Trump campaigns are targeting a uh, battleground state with former President Trump um, set to hold a rally, or he also held a rally in Pennsylvania as well. Let's hear more from Harris in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Very much consider us the underdog. We have a lot of work to do to earn the vote of the American people. That's why we're on this bus tour today, and we're going to be traveling this country as we've been and talking with folks, listening to folks, and hopefully earning their votes over the next 79 days. Yeah, so um, despite Harris being favored over Trump in recent polls, um, she continued to maintain that she will be active on the campaign trail. Um, Also on the campaign trail this weekend was uh, former President Donald Trump. He was also in Pennsylvania. Trump spoke to a crowd of supporters in Wilkes-Barre on Saturday, claiming America would be worse under a Kamala Harris presidency. Let's hear more from Trump. Joe Biden hates her, okay? (laughs) Hates her. This was an overthrow of a president. Kamala Harris is a super left liberal who ruined San Francisco, ruined California, and delivered a badly broken economy, a badly broken border. Under Kamala Harris and crooked Joe Biden, the American dream was dead, and it is dead. It's dead as a doornail. They'll never bring it back unless we win. I don't think Trump Sheesh. wants to be there no more, yo. Mm. I really, mean? truly feel like Trump don't want to run no more. I feel, I, you know I feel, what's crazy that you say like that? I feel like Trump wants uh, the Republicans to do to him what the Democrats did to Biden. Pull him out? <laughs> yeah. Put me you know out of my crazy? misery. <laughs> no, you know what's crazy? After the assassination attempt, and he started, and he was on the stage that first time he spoke publicly, and he said, I shouldn't be here. That was the first time that I was like, wow, like maybe he really feels a way. But, you know, I mean, people you around it. him might have people around him might have, you know, hey, you got it. You got it. You got it. And maybe he's just, you know, doing what he got to do for I think the it's people. an ego thing, too. No, I think it's from, it's a form of PTSD. Man, did just get shot at. Let's be clear. Yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and your response to trauma is just stay busy. Just keep him out there. Keep right. him out there. Keep him out there. Yeah. I don't think he wants to be out there no more. When he said uh, the other day that if Kamala Harris wins, he'll move to Venezuela. 
I'm like, that man ready to go now. <laughs> he out of here. I mean, he got shot at. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he's like, F this. Not to mention facing all the criminal charges he's facing. Yeah, at at some point, you got to be like, man, this ain't worth it. <laughs> you know what? Ain't none of this really you know worth what? it. <laughs> Tired of the thug life. Work. I can go back to Celebrity Apprentice or something. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. All right. Facts, facts. Well, that is yeah. front page news. We'll see you next hour, Morgan. Yeah, we'll talk uh, or we'll uh, hear from the vice presidential nominees. All right. Everybody else, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Again, let us know how your weekend was, what you did, and all that good stuff. 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, Jess is out on maternity leave. We got Lauren LaRosa filling in, and let's get back in some front page news. What's up, Morgan? Good morning. Good morning from Chicago. Yeah, the DNC is going down this week. And Democratic vice presidential candidate Tim Walls, he held his first solo rally in Nebraska over the weekend on Saturday. Now, Walls said in Minnesota, uh, where he's governor, people respect each other's choices. Now, let's hear more from Walls. Here in Nebraska, it's the same way. We might not make those choices for ourselves, but we live by the golden rule. And that golden rule is mind your own damn business. Mind your own damn business. Yeah, the rally was held near Nebraska's competitive second congressional district surrounding Omaha, which both campaigns are hoping to win. Walls, who grew up in, in Nebraska, went to uh, Shadron State College and served in Nebraska's Army National Guard, reminded uh, rally goers of his home state roots, making multiple references to Nebraska culture. Now, Walls said here in Nebraska, we have a slogan, Nebraska is not for everyone. Well, it sure isn't for Donald Trump. I'll tell you that. He also took tr shots at Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, and said in Nebraska and in Minnesota, we don't need a Yale-educated philosophy major. Now, meanwhile, Republican vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance, he's pushing back against recent polling that shows a surge in support for Vice President Harris in the 2024 presidential race. Appearing on Fox News Sunday, Vance claimed polling at this point in the election season has often not reflected the results of the presidential election. So let's hear more from Vance. Look, I recognize that there are a lot of folks, even in the GOP establishment, and certainly on the far left, who don't like the fact that Donald Trump picked me. I actually take their criticism as a badge of honor. I'm not shocked that a lot of inside the Beltway media types don't like me, but their policies are the problem. Of course they don't like me because we're running to fix what they have broken. Consistently, what you've seen in 2016 and 2020 is that the media uses fake polls to drive down Republican turnout and to create dissension and conflict with Republican voters. P polls are hilarious to me. Well, not really the polls, but how so, people yeah. react to polls. Because if your candidate is doing good in the polls, mm -hmm. you like polls. Right. If they're not doing good in the polls, then polls don't matter <laughs> right now. Democrats mm -hmm. did it when, you know, Joe Biden was losing in the polls. Now the Republicans are doing it when Trump is losing in the polls. It's disgusting. But just know, and I've been saying yeah, this, so uh, the reason they don't really care about polls is because all over the country, uh, when if Kamala Harris wins in November, Republicans will refuse to certify the results of the election. Just know that. All those county election officials who are yeah. election deniers, they're already planning to stop the results right away if it looks like the vice president is winning. And once again, that corrupt-ass Supreme Court, Trump's court that he put three judges on, those folks are ready and willing to overturn the results of the election if it gets to them. So I hope folks are prepared for that uh, come November. Well, didn't the polls say Hillary Clinton was going to win? They were saying Hillary was up. Yeah. Yes, I was just getting ready to say that. It, it sure did. Well, Vance went on to say that Harris's rhetoric on economic policy is not resonating with voters and the Americans and that Americans, excuse me, were much better off under President Trump. Uh, this comes, of course, after polls recently released by The Washington Post, ABC News and Ipsos has Harris leading Trump by just a few percentage points. Um, so, you know, like you said. The polls are what they are. When you like them, you like them. You don't, you don't. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, as mentioned before, the Democratic National Convention is underway in Chicago. It kicks off today. Uh, Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker says the city is ready for pro-Palestinian protesters at the DNC. In an interview with CNN State of the Union, Pritzker said he's confident in the city's plan to handle the high numbers of expected protesters against Israel's war in Gaza. And he remained uh, insistent, however, that violence would be met with consequences. Let's hear more from J.B. Pritzker. 
if we're going to protect the protesters, but also protect all the people visiting, 50,000 people coming to Chicago and the residents of Chicago. So I, the plan's been in place for a year and a quarter now already. We're going to execute on that plan in the next four days. If there are troublemakers, they're going to get arrested and they're going to get convicted. Um, but the fact is that the vast majority of people who are protesting, and we've seen this before, are you know peaceful protesters. They want to have their voices heard. They're going to be heard, no doubt about it, and we're going to protect that. We've got a, a very, very different situation the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party honestly is has coalesced around this candidate. That was not the case in 1968. Yeah, they said they expecting like 20,000 uh, yeah. 20, protesters. I was watching CNN yesterday and they were showing you like the build outs that they have mm -hmm. and it's like miles and miles from where the DNC is going to be. It's like bigger than what they had to build at uh, the yeah. Republican National Commission. Yeah, they were protesting at the loop and yesterday. just let it be known to yeah, about 50,000 people expected to descend on Chicago for the four-day convention. Of course, Chicago's mayor, Brandon Johnson, also told ABC's This Week, Chicago police are working with Secret Service and other law enforcement agencies to maintain a secure convention. And just from a personal perspective being here, there is a lot of foot traffic. There is a lot of... Uh, police presence, you see it. And there are road closures. So, you know, if you are in Chicago, you know, stay stay vigilant and, you know, plan ahead and plan early. But President Biden is set to take the convention stage tonight at the United Center to make his case for Vice President Kamala Harris and Governor Tim Walz. Um, again, security will be extremely tight with uh, this being the 27th time the city has hosted the DNC. That's I'm not gonna lie to Chicago. Their primetime um, lineup so, yeah, don't look too strong, yo. Who they got? What? Kerry Washington is on. They got Kerry. I mean, Kerry Washington, Washington. hosting one now. I'm talking about. Like y'all talking about reunion. the celebrity. I'm talking about the goddamn politician. Oh, you, you know. know what I'm saying? You know, you know me. Just, like, you talking just, about the headliner? I'm the distracted so you over got, here, um, so you know. Yeah, they don't. They it don't. It don't look like I don't know. Maybe I was expecting like, you know, Governor Josh Shapiro to have a prime time slot, or you know, Governor Gretchen Whitmer or Westmore, like Gavin Newsom. I mean, I say Secretary Pete does, but it feel like. They highlighting a lot of the old regime still, like Biden and the first lady tonight, Hillary and Bill on another night. Mm -hmm. It's like, eh. eh. Would people think, come for I her if they didn't do that? The way I look at it, at least, it looks like it's kind of a passing the torch from the old to the new. Well, I won't call it old to the new, but it, you do have the older uh, politicians, the the vetted long-term politicians speaking at early on in the convention, whereas later on in Wednesday and Thursday, you have the, you know, it's in walls and of course Harris accepting the I mean, nomination. You got ex president like speaking. So, yeah. Yeah, but I, I I just I just feel like we should be mm -hmm. talking about the now and the future. Yeah, you got a little you bit of You know, like like I don't know. Like and I'm not saying that they shouldn't speak, but I'm just talking about the prime time slots. It feels like we should be showcasing the now and the future. Olivia Pope and the president are reuniting. Just in case y'all can Goodbye, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Morgan. It's happening. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so that's your front page news. I'm Morgan Wood. You can follow me on socials at Morgan Media. And of course, catch the Black Information Network at Black Information Network. And for more news coverage and live updates from the DNC, download the free iHeartRadio app and listen or visit at BINnews.com. Talk to y'all tomorrow. Peace. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.